What's going on everyone? Ben Bono here for another foray into the Summa Theologica. Today we are moving right along to question 52, which is the second of three questions where we are discussing the relations of angels to corporeal things. So last time we looked at stuff like, how well, what does it mean in the Bible? And angels seem to take on bodies, and now we're looking at the angels in relation to place. In other words, what impact do angels have on physical locations? Okay, so we've got three articles here. We'll go ahead and kick it off with number one, whether an angel is in a place. In other words, is this even a relevant question to be asking? few objections here. Aristotle says that only movable bodies are in places. Well, we've already seen many, many times that angels have no bodies. Next two objections very similar along those same lines. To be in place requires quantity. Angels don't have that. It requires to be measured and contained. Angels don't have that. In other words, to be in a place seems to require some kind of physicality, some kind of corporealness. And since we've already established angels don't have that, how can we say that they're in a place? Well, the Collect, which is a uh, Christian prayer book, of course, says, let thy holy angels who dwell herein keep us in peace. So dwell herein would refer to being in a place. So angels are in a place, but in a different sense than a body. So basically uh, Aquinas is saying all those objections are correct, but that's not what we're talking about when we talk about angels being in a place. Angels are said to be in a place based on the application of angelic power rather than by having quantity. Or we could broaden that out and say rather than being there physically in a corporeal sense, they are in a place based on how their angelic power is applied in a given place. Angels are in a place in the same way that the soul is in a body. It's an important comparison. The body doesn't contain the soul. It's a physical thing. You can't go into a hospital and get it removed from you the way you could any other body part. Uh, the soul just doesn't work that way, um, but the applications of the soul's power affect the body. Right? And Aquinas says the article answers the objections. In fact, really that first point kind of makes all these objections irrelevant. It's saying, yes, those are true, but that's not what we're talking about. Moving on to Article 2, whether an angel can be in several places at once. The angel is in a place as the soul is in the body. Souls are in several places at once since they are in every part of the body. Therefore, angels can also be several places at once. An angel is in the body he assumes and is therefore in every part of that body. Go back to the last question, question 51, for more on what it means for an angel to assume a body. We go into great detail on that. Uh, and then Damascene says the angels are wherever they operate, and the angel that destroyed Sodom was in several places at once. Damascene says that while the angels are in heaven, they are not on earth, which would seem to indicate they are limited in where they can be. Which indeed is what we find in our argument. Angels have finite power, therefore their power extends only to one determined thing. However, this is where uh, Aquinas addresses the view that these objections are addressing and, and agrees with them to some extent. This does not mean that the angels can only be in one place as if it were a specific point. Rather, angels can be in any one indivisible place, whether large or small. So uh, what Aquinas is essentially doing here is saying there's three positions and I'm going to take the moderate position. So if one position is angels can be all sorts of places everywhere or many places at once, and then the uh, position on the other side is angels can only be in one place, and by one place we mean one specific, you know, microscopic little pixel. Uh, that's not uh, true either. It's they are in one thing. So whether that's a body, whether that's the body the angel assumes, I guess even the city of Sodom counts there, uh, one thing, okay? So, uh, you know, it seem, there seems to be a lot of wiggle room for what that thing can be, and just how indivisible it can be, but that's the point. 
and once again the article answers the objections maybe Aquinas just didn't want to write of answers to all these objections I don't know finally whether several angels can be at the same time in the same place three objections the only reason bodies can't be in the same place is because they physically fill it angels are not constricted by this an angel in the body can be in the same place therefore so can two angels it would seem when demons possess bodies they and the soul of that body are in one place therefore by that we can establish that two spiritual substances can be in the same place but just as there are not two souls in the same body there are not two angels in the same place it's the argument from authority and then the argument is when an angel is in a place his power perfectly touches it thus if two angels were in the same place there would be two competing causes of the same thing which cannot be uh, Aquinas uses the example of like if you have a group of men trying to push a boat into the ocean or you know wherever uh, yes they're all pushing on the boat but that's because no one of them is pushing on the boat perfectly they each have to push on a different part of the boat whereas he's saying that like for an angel it would be as though when an angel pushes a boat he's pushing on the whole thing thus if you would you know extrapolate that out in the metaphor it'd be like if one person pushing a boat push the whole boat so that there was no room for anyone else to be pushing that it's a kind of a weird metaphor uh, it makes sense to me I don't know how well I'm explaining it but basically the gist of it is you can't have multiple angels in one spiritual place because it re would result in this what he calls it he calls competing causes so there you have that Oh, we actually answer some objections, but not quite yet. We still punt on the first one, saying that's answered in uh, the argument, which it is. You know, again, we're not talking about angels. Uh, the the restriction on them being in two in the, of them in the same place isn't because they're physically filling it. So that's true. Uh, angels and bodies are in the same place in different ways. That seems to be the sticking point that two things can be in the same place if they're in the place in a different way, which is why. Uh, not to get ahead of ourselves um, for objection three here well, well let's just go ahead and gone a soul and the demon represent two different relations to causality so if we think about that we have essentially in in the case of this third one where we talk about a demon possessed individual we have three things in one place we have a soul an angel and the person uh, and they are all occupying the same place but in three different ways you can't have two bodies in that place, you can't have two souls in that place, and you can't have two demons in that place. Now, I'm a little disappointed that he didn't bring up the story of Legion from uh, the Gospel of Luke. Uh, maybe that'll come up somewhere else in the Summa, but that instantly was what leapt to my mind. Right? So if you're not familiar with the story, the whole deal where there's apparently like a thousand demons possessing this one guy uh, and I'd be really curious to hear what Aquinas' answer to that would be and how that works with this because all this makes sense uh, but that seem that would seem to be you know a logical fourth objection to put in there to kind of build on those three and I'm a little disappointed we don't know the answer to that and, and uh, maybe somebody you know uh, uh, to mystic scholar has speculated on what he would have said there uh, but that would be fascinating to have found that out or to have him interact with that passage here and unfortunately he did not and I, I'm not knowledgeable enough to speculate on what he might have said so oh well I guess we'll just have to be dissatisfied uh, a little bit on this one or at least I will anyway that's it for question 52 and 53 yet another short one so the local movement of angels i'll be back in a couple days with that one until then i'm bendy bono i'll talk to you later goodbye